G'day. I um, wanted to talk to you a little bit about coronavirus, COVID, pandemic, and grief. In January, my wife, um, who had <coughs> breast cancer um, for 18 years and is just an incredible, was an incredible person, um, got incredibly sick with liver metastases and um, she died in February 19. And this is kind of when all the coronavirus stuff was just starting and, and then we were placed in isolation. And it's just been such a, as you can imagine, a quite a weird combination of isolation and uh, grief. But I was in some ways saved in my own personal isolation by my son who um, was at university uh, having to come home and kind of get stuck with me and, and that's been a kind of wonderful blessing to be stuck with my beautiful son and I guess all of this stuff it's just it's mind-boggling what's happening to the world but I just wanted to give a little perspective and in trying to make sense like one of my griefs is personal it's it's been horrendous at times and it's been healthy too because I've been able to express it and I've had wonderful friends to express it with and I thank them from the bottom of my heart for being there for me and um, and I'll be there for them when and if they need me um, but to see the incredible different approaches around the world to this virus and and how it's been and and how grief must be playing such an incredible role around the world and here in australia we have had this very well coordinated and well exercised public health response to coronavirus and so far thankfully we have had great success in keeping deaths and cases to a minimum and this is just an incredible I mean, I'm incredibly proud of our country for doing that and um, and I think you know I totally support the public health approach we've had 89 deaths I believe in Australia maybe 91 um, and our growth rate is less than 20 per day currently and we're working on some states and territories of our country have zero cases and have had for up to three weeks now. And we're aiming, I think we're aiming that for elimination of the virus in our society, or at least incredible testing and tracking and control and quarantining of people appropriately. And this is, this is the sensible approach and it allows our economy and our activities and our lives to get back to normal a lot more quickly. What I'm seeing in some other places is a, an attitude where the economy is so important that people see it on a mass scale. If you see it on a mass scale, you can say, oh, well, it's only, you know, 60,000 people dying and you know, maybe 70,000 die of the flu every year. So it's not a big deal, but in fact, this is a new virus and it's getting into a population quite quickly and the death rate is probably about five times higher than the flu and the problem is you're going to end up with uh, the new virus affecting people that are not immune to it and, and death happening on a mass scale if public health measures aren't put in place so this is where say in the USA where um, there's been a discoordinated and poorly led response to the virus that people are dying. Now, if you put it to somebody that they would take a 25% cut in their wage to save their parent, there, no one would have a problem with that. There's no moral question about that. But when people look at it over the, the mass scale and they think they can just go back to a normal life, they, they will end up facing that dilemma of somebody they know dying of this disease. So I think the 
people are right to be very cautious in getting out and about, particularly in places where their governments do not understand or at least or possibly are deliberately letting people die. And this grief is almost as bad as my personal grief because I do love places like the States. I, I have beautiful friends there and I, I just, it, it just makes me so sad to see those choices that are being made. And anyway, I, I just hope that if a second wave does come through that, that they are able to get on top of testing and quarantining and, and these basic public health measures that are so, been so well done in my country. I just, I just hope that can be replicated and people can use our model uh, of sensible restrictions and sensible easing in the context of testing. That's my little spiel on grief and COVID for today. Thanks.